Hello today we are going to visit some medieval churches in southwest Bulgaria and hopefully some interesting rocks in the Shegava River Canyon. The group this time is bigger. Here, next to me is Krasimir. I even considered giving him the microphone for the video commentaries. Stay tuned, we will start soon. My initial idea was to offer interesting facts about each of the churches I visited, but then I realized that there were much more important issues related to our tour. Anyway, the details about each church are on the site Full Frame Nomad, I have put a link in the description below. But let's go back to the thoughts that came to me a few days after the trip. According to the so-called National Register of Temples in Bulgaria, which I found on the internet, the number of Orthodox churches is 2,287, and according to other sources, such as the Register of the Directorate of Religions, the total number of churches and monasteries is about 8,000. 88 of them are medieval or at least are marked on the internet as such. For comparison, according to data from the network, the number of Catholic sites in the world is between 220,000 and 270,000. The number of Eastern Orthodox is between 64,000 and 77,000. Bulgarian churches make up about 10% of the total number of Eastern Orthodox and 2% of the total number of Christian churches in the world. I admit that I had a hard time reaching most of these figures, and I had expectations that church institutions would be more diligent in describing and cataloging their property. It is well known that the church, no matter whether it is Catholic or Orthodox, is the world's largest owner of land and property. The most adequate sites in Bulgarian, which make some attempt to create directories and lists of existing temples, are private projects. The Directorate of Religions also has a register with the options to filter and locate the geographical position of each church, but is not very convenient to use, and the website of the Holy Synod has lists of temples by diocese, but in a very rudimentary form. There is no detailed information about the respective temple, just contact details are listed. So, people, this is our new discovery. These are the ruins of a monastery, which we didn't even know existed here just moments ago. Actually we don't know what was located here and when you don't know for a fact what you are looking at it is better to say I don't know what I am looking at. We joked a bit, but these are the actual monastery ruins. As you can see there is not much left, but the local people really put effort in finding and clearing the place. And here are the very old oak trees, which our local guide mentioned, when he was giving us directions for the monastery ruins. It is difficult to determine their age, but they seem quite old indeed. We had some doubts about the car ascending this hill, because the road is a mixture of mud and sand, but it didn't prove to be much of a challenge. It is not a surprise that the Holy Synod in Bulgaria doesn't put any efforts to make such a directory. His target audience visits the nearest church in their place of residence and probably does not care at all how many churches are there in Bulgaria, what periods they are from, what is their history, 
what are their architectural features, etc. According to my observation such details interest most often people who are as far away from religion and religiosity as possible. And something else impresses me. According to an article in a Bulgarian newspaper from last year, 99 new temples have been built in the last four years with money from the state budget, and 86 old temples have been restored under European programs for the last seven years. I don't know, do we need new temples? Yes, it is clear that on Easter and other church holidays, when it is fashionable to go to church, probably no one will visit the medieval half-buried churches in Pascha, Staroselo, Cervan Breg, and Vukovo. They do not have the capacity for big congregations either. However, I cannot help but wonder if we need 100 new temples, while we already have 8,000, many of which are collapsing and thus we are losing 500 years of history. Krasimir said during our tour, for some temples, it's normal to break down and disappear. You can't save everything. It doesn't make sense, maybe. In the past, it seemed to me that there was no settlement without at least one religious temple in it. Times have probably demanded it. Villages are disappearing, too. This is the course of history. However, I feel sad that these medieval churches, which have stood the test of time for half a millennium, are doomed to oblivion and imminent destruction. In the description of the video I put a link to the list of 88 medieval churches that I found on the internet. I hope I have motivated you to see at least some of them. Visit them while they are still there. The frescoes we are currently looking at are of Street Friday in Vukovo. Although it is easily accessible and visibly well preserved, for Street Pika doesn't have much information. From the plaque in the yard we learn that the frescoes from 1598 are completely preserved, and that the church is an architectural, architectural and artistic monument of culture of national importance. During my previous visit to Kustendil I was surprised by the presence of a large number of rock megalithic sanctuaries in the area. This time I am amazed by the number of medieval churches scattered around the surrounding villages. Was the area so densely populated in the Middle Ages that such a large number of churches were built and painted? Even if we assume that most of them were built with the means and efforts of the local population, I wonder how the greater effort was financed, namely their painting. The next church street Ivan which we visit today is literally on the road, just before the village of Pastuk. The temple is unlocked, so I managed to take a few shots with the icons inside. The church was half destroyed before the restoration, so there are no murals in it. After another kilometer or two down the river we reached the last medieval church for today, Street Trinity, located after Pastuk, on the opposite bank of the Struma. We crossed the river on an old and very picturesque iron bridge and after about a kilometer of driving on a dirt road along the river we reach a meadow, from which you can see the church, hidden among several trees. This is the temple with the most picturesque location visited today. The door is permanently locked with a bolt and maybe that's better.
I will end this video with some aerial shots from the Shegava Canyon near Rezdava village. The place is very picturesque, so I will make a separate visit in the near future to present more of its beauty. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, activate the notification bell for future videos and hit the like button in order to support my channel. Thank you.